Welcome to the Z-Line Chef Challenge. Today, we're in the beautiful Z-Line Kitchen Studio where our competitors will be preparing the classic American dish and one will come out on top as the Z-Line Chef Challenge champion. Introducing our first competitor is Matthew Biondi. You might recognize him from the Appliance Educator YouTube channel as well as Z-Line installation and product support videos. Matthew is an avid home chef and a lover of food. Welcome Matt, great to have you here. Yeah, great to be here, thanks for having me. How are you feeling about today? I feel pretty good. Uh, a little nervous, a little excited, and uh, just stoked to be here really. How'd you end up here? It's a great, great question. Uh, I love home food, I love cooking, and I think my mouth uh, might have ran a little bit too much and I may have challenged a actual chef. And uh, yeah, one thing led to another and here I am, putting my money where my mouth is, or not. Well, good luck out there today. Sounds like you'll need it. <laughs> I, I, will, <laughs> I will for sure. Introducing our next challenger is Chef Mark Esty. Not only is he a luminary in the Reno Tahoe food scene, but he's also a Z-Line brand ambassador. Mark believes in locally sourced quality ingredients and building a community around delicious and healthy food. Welcome, Chef. Hey, thanks for having me, Drew. Appreciate it. Really excited to be here. What do you got planned for today? Uh, I don't know. I want to see what these ingredients are. We're going to have a great time. Uh, Matt is a wonderful guy with even better hair. And I'm looking forward to seeing if he can cook. Excellent, yeah. Chef. Well, good luck today. Hey, thank you. I'm going to need it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Introducing our panel of judges for today's competition, we'll start with Galen Bradford, CMO of Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. Galen is a husband, father, athlete, and an executive who loves food and is always looking for that next amazing dish to fuel his active lifestyle. Welcome, Galen. Thank you, Drew. Our next judge on the panel is Britt Johnson. She's the executive director of Z-Line Kitchen and Bath and she embodies the motto of attainable luxury. Britt is going to bring her laser focus and attention to detail in judging today's competition. Welcome, Britt. Thanks, Drew. And our final judge joining us today is Michael Tragash, Reno Yelp community manager and the man who has his fingers on the pulse of the Reno food scene. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Drew. All right, judges, welcome. And what are you looking for in today's competition? I think for me, I'm stomach first and then performance and everything else later. I'm gonna be going all about the taste today. And you, Britt? You know, Drew, they say that you eat with your eyes first and then your stomach, so I'm going for presentation today. Excellent, and Michael? You know, I see a couple of beautiful pieces of meat in that kitchen, and I wanna see what these chefs are gonna do with them. Are we talking about Matt or are we talking about Mark? <laughs> <laughs> for today's competition, our two competitors will be making the classic American meal. Salad, steak, and potatoes, featuring their selection of any of the ingredients available. They will have 30 minutes to have their salad course prepared, and in the full 60 minutes, they'll need to plate their dinner for our judges. With that, let's put 60 minutes on the clock, and chefs, let's go. Let's go. All right. Don't be shy. Yeah, you know, I think the, uh, I think the pandemic really brought out the uh, rise of the home chef and people were honing their skills all over the place. You know, I think you're right, because you know, especially with Maddie, I mean, Maddie started bringing in all these recipes and just has kind of changed the game with just like eating here at a, in a work environment. He's been bringing all these private recipes home. We're like, hey, this is one of the best dishes I've ever had. So maybe you can actually put up today. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, we have Mark Estes, probably the most famous chef in Nevada. Sure. You know, if not top three, you know, there's, there's some, some of those celebrity chefs in Vegas. But kind of an unknown with Matt Biondi. <laughs> it's he's a wild. not ranked yet. He's kind of unknown. <laughs> he's kind of unknown. But like you just said, he also has shown his skills throughout the last couple of years and it earned him a spot in this kitchen today. Yes. And uh, I'm excited to see what they can do in this uh, Z-Line kitchen. Just watching how they cut, you know, you can see the, the executive chef with Mark. Mark has, this is not his first onion. Matt, I've never seen you so quiet. Yeah. I like, I'm not a chef, so I have to focus on everything I do. Every cut I make, everything I put in there. Every cut right. you take. Chef, Chef Matt, walk us through what you're preparing today. So, we had quite a big spread here, some carrots, uh, the cornichon, the uh, capers. So dish I'm gonna make now is one I've made a couple times. 
I usually like to save it for when I have like a date that I'm going to do for the first time because it, it looks complicated, but it's pretty easy. A good closing rate? Very good closing rate. <laughs> excellent, uh, excellent. It's um, it basically you're making a tartare, but using carrots instead of ground beef. Oh, delicious. And okay. So, Using carrots as a layer, I'm gonna do avocado as a base, basically a bed of avocado, a tartare on top with the carrots, shallot, cornichon, capers, some Dijon, and a, a raw egg. I have to use a raw egg, an egg yolk. I couldn't find pasteurized eggs, so I'm gonna actually pasteurize an egg here so I could use it raw, which basically means slightly cooking it for three minutes, not a boil, just to basically bake off the salmonella to make it edible as a raw egg. Great tip for our chefs at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you're gonna be bringing a couple pretty strong, complex flavors together, pretty advanced for a home chef. Yeah. Awesome. I hope so. I might wanna perform, so. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right, chef, take me through what you're preparing for the first course. I'm gonna pasteurize an egg. I'm gonna make a carrot. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I here am going to do a little bit of a take on a nice soie, per se, okay? so. I'm gonna have a little bit of egg. I'm gonna to try to really, I really take the challenge of using all the ingredients, as many as possible as I see Fantastic. out here. So I'm gonna have an egg on there. I'm gonna have some roasted peppers and roasted carrots. I'm gonna make a little carrot top garnish. We're gonna use some lettuce, because it is a salad. Uh, the sauce will be a, a mixture of avocado, celery, uh, excuse me, avocado capers, olives, and anchovies, which I freaking love. Right? Excellent. Of course, a little potato in there to make it more of the niçoise pot. Then we'll pop off to the steak. Got to get the steak ready here. So steak, I'll take the cap, I'll take the cap fat off, make a little demi gloss, work in a potato, potato puree, purple cabbage, and then a shaved salad. Sounds yeah. like you're ready, chef. Yeah, we're working on There's it. There's a lot of strong on. flavors out here today. Yeah. Is there a particular ingredient you think might be the most challenging to work with? Challenging ingredient? No, not really, because we have the Z-Line products here. The kitchen is stacked to the nth degree. The power's here, the, uh, the, the attainable luxuries here, all the things we need are ready to rock and roll. We got everything cooking back here already. Yeah, it looks like, like it's going great. Let's just get off there, right? That's kind Fantastic, of the Fantastic, chef. Good luck, thank you. Thank you. There's some aromas starting to come out of the kitchen here. Some fresh thyme I smell. I wonder if, the, if Mark's got his, uh, his demi-gloss started over there. It seems like it. Oh yeah. We have a nice hot pan. Now I'm clear. This out. Boom. Oh, look at that. Honestly, okay. I'm excited about this pepper. Nice little cut right here. Aren't we having a salad first? Is he jumping the gun here? I think he's just prepping everything. I mean, he's a professional chef. He knows how to He pace. doesn't need 30 minutes you know? to make a, sh a salad. Can't really see, can't really see what. Uh, it's hard, it's hard to see what Matt's working there. on over there from this angle. Oh, oh, he's, ba he's back. I believe the tartare has formed. Here we go. Carrots going in the bowl. Oh, look at that. Put a little shallot and some corn shallots in there. And uh, I didn't see the egg going yet, maybe. I put the egg in there. Oh, okay. the egg is okay. in. Okay. Yeah. The egg okay. is in. Pasteurized successfully. Okay. Good job, Matt. Okay. Nobody's getting salmonella on my watch. Yeah, it's really important for us. It's all I care about, really. I don't want to like. I can fail at this, but I want to get in See, now he's getting points. For Thank me. you for that. Yeah, that Thank you for that. Thank you for that. 15 minutes, chef. 15 minutes until your salads are to be played. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matt, we're about halfway through the first round. How are things looking on your end? Uh, pretty good. Good, we have 15 minutes left. I think I'll be wrapping up just in time. Uh, yeah, got my, uh, my tartare made right here, essentially. I'm gonna put it on a bed of avocado. And then just really getting the shape down and plating it right is what I have to worry about now, so. Chef, we're about oh, halfway through the first round. How are things looking on oh, your I'm end? Oh, I'm loving this over here. I'm really enjoying working with Matt. He's a professional over there. Uh, really excited. I've worked with him a few times when he's behind the camera. And I have to say, he's pretty darn good in front of the camera too. In essence, he's uh, you know taken on this challenge. He stepped in. Um, he's here to have some fun. He's here to kind of show off. I understand it that this is a dish he would make for a date, and he's single right now. So if anyone out there is looking for a date, uh, Matt is 100% available, and he can rep he can replicate that hair. Okay, <laughs> so that's definitely a doable thing, right? And, Absolutely. Uh, I know if, if you're asking, sorry, I'm taking sorry. Uh, otherwise, we are uh, having a lot of fun over here. Yeah, and it looks like you got multiple burners going right away, and you're oh, kind of diving you know, into everything. So. This is how we do it, really. So the idea is that you kind of keep things going. I'm grilling up the lettuces. Beautiful. I already got my eggs out over here. I got my potatoes looking here. I'm looking at the second course right now, so I'm already on my. You're already, already preparing your steaks and getting ready look, for the. Got to look at the dish. steak and the meat right now. So fantastic. Has to be, chef. Has to be part of it. So. Well, I'll leave you to it. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. All right, judges, we've seen quite a bit of action going on. Anything you're picking up on over there, Galen? I'm just seeing Mark moving and grooving. I see Matt working on this tartare. The judges and I have been talking about tartare. We did not know that you could do that with a vegetable, but I guess um, it's an interesting choice. We're excited to see how that turns out. It's a high risk. High and, reward. And uh, I think high reward in this, in this case. Fantastic. Britt, anything you're seeing over there? I'm seeing Mark doing a lot more than Matt. 
So I'm. <laughs> Is that a bad but thing I'm, I'm rooting for the underdog here. I'm rooting for Matt. Excellent, excellent. And Michael, anything you're picking up on in the kitchen today? You know, I, I actually think Mark's playing it pretty safe. He's staying the course and he's sticking to some classics and Matt's stepping out of bounds. And I'm excited to see what comes over. Fantastic. I just noticed that, that Matt's uh, molding did not pan out. The tartare did not hold up as he was expecting. Was he going, oh, I missed, I missed that. A glob? Was he yeah. going for a glob? He was trying to put it in that measuring cup we were talking about a few minutes ago. Oh, and I, I think see. it just wasn't holding. See, yeah. that could hurt his rankings with Britt, who's looking at presentation. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking more at quality yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. And innovation over here, so I think. Don't neglect the plating, guys. It's interesting watching how they move, right? It's like seeing how Mark is navigating the kitchen, navigating the recipes, systematic. Seems like Maddie's like, oh, I don't need to, I don't want to forget this. I don't want to forget that. Moving quick movements. Can I get a little glass of wine, would you mind? If someone anywhere in there? I guess I want to have a little toast. There you are, chef. Actually, just a little bit for me. Cheers, and actually go ahead and do it. That's my sauce. <laughs> oh, that was next level. Did you see that move? Oh. Oh, there was almost a, a salt day moment in there. Can't steal it, he's already got it. <laughs> Look what he's doing with this. Oh. Wow. What's our, what's our time? Are we gonna get a dramatic countdown? I, I, we're looking at, feeling a little close and I'm wondering if Matt's gonna make it. Matty's looking like he's behind. He's moving faster and faster <laughs> every minute. So we're kind of plating up here for you. A little take on a knee swa. Uh, everyone knows the famous tuna niswa. This got everything but the tuna. The fish comes from the form of the anchovy, so it's potatoes and olives, and I uh, um, have to say a perfectly cooked egg in a really fly scenario. Okay, at least that's my feeling. Uh, I don't know how you pull something like that together. And well, I think this is what, this is what makes him one of the best uh, chefs in the country. Right? It's stuff like this. You know, it's, he's able to connect with food in a way that I have never seen. Yeah. And how he flawlessly does it while telling a story. He three makes minutes, it easy. Chef. Three minutes for your plate. Makes it look so smooth. One minute left, chef. One minute. Okay. Mine are done. All right, we're coming into our final few seconds in the first round. And Matt's preparing his last dish here. Coming to the countdown, we've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and that's the end of the first round there. Judges. So here I've made a salad, it's a uh, carrot tartare. Um, so basically I just took three of the tricolor carrots we had, uh, ground them up in a food processor to be the consistency of ground beef, uh, and then mixed that with a seasoning, essentially Dijon mustard, capers, anchovies, cornichon, um, a little salt and pepper, and a um, a shallot, and I put that on a bed of just loosely diced avocado with uh, olive oil and lemon juice. This is impressive. Very nice, Chef. Thank you. Yes, yes. What is this crispy top part? Oh, those are the tops of the carrots. I, I cut the tops of the carrots and then fried those a little bit to put them on top, just to bring the carrot back around. I wonder if he heard us talking. <laughs> a nice touch, nonetheless. Well Thank done, you. Chef. Please enjoy. It's pretty, I will say. It sure does have all of the hallmarks of a steak tartare. It does, it really tastes the anchovy and Worcestershire. It's a little overpowering. I taste mustard. You taste mustard? It's a little overpowering. I think he was just trying to keep this to stay together, like you had mentioned, and that's why it's heavy For on the, the glue. Mustard. For the glue? I think there's a bit, a bit too much salt in here. Maybe he didn't play that, that quite proper. I wonder if you overspiced it. Because Matty's hallmark is just like really even spices, not too salty. I think he, did, he tried to do too much with it, honestly. I tell you what, if you get a bite with that uh, fried carrot top, Is it, it good? changes the game. Okay, this. here we go. Let me try to navigate one of those. Mmm, you're right. It's a slight char. Mm -hmm. It's like we were talking about with the carrots. It's a little too sweet, a little too bright. 
play it down a little bit. That yeah. balance right there. It's unbelievable. It's almost like a nori wrap. What he did, <laughs> right? It's, it has that it's texture. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Don't I, let him I'm, hear me say that. Good, good, good point there, Michael. I am enjoying it a bit more than I was anticipating when he initially described this dish. All right, here you are, sir. All right, judges, steamed judges. Um, we have here a salad. It's a little take on a classic uh, Niswa salad. So we have some Kamata olives, some potatoes in there, which are part of the dish today, um, a little avocado, and then capers and anchovies and carrot tops and roasted carrots and some roasted peppers, and a little bit of cooked down uh, green leaf and romaine to keep it the salad look there. And a little avocado puree with extra virgin olive oil, tie it together, a little salt on top, and I uh, hope you enjoy the uh, nicely cooked local egg. Thank That's you, our take. We like to try to create memories, right? So salad niswa typically is made with tuna, green beans, uh, but this is a little bit different take on it. Oh, thank you, so, chef. Nice. It's a nice looking salad. It has greens, it has lettuce on it. So we like our salads have lettuce. The sometimes. local, the local egg is local cool. egg. Yes, the nice nice yolks I kind of hold on there really together. So kind of mix it around a little bit, get a little bite of everything as you go through. Get your potatoes and uh, using using their ingredients that were on our list today: steak, and potatoes. Uh, yeah, we're gonna mix it around a little bit. We have we have our first kitchen kitchen comp uh, issue. Uh oh. Do you have a hair? Some no. Somehow my plate. Please enjoy. Has no potatoes. Oh, Signature oh an ingredient. ingredient. Who stole that? Oh. oh my gosh. Missing an ingredient. All right, judges, you've had a bite of each chef's food. What do you think so far? Any early front runners? I think for presentation, I'm gonna have to give it to Matt on what? that one. Ooh. Just a little bit more creative with his little structure. Excellent. So some of his uh, bold, bold choices paid off. Exactly, yeah. Galen, what do you think after the first few bites? Well, honestly, Matthew's presentation really impressed me. I felt like it was a little oversalted, but a really impressive dish. What he did on top with the carrots was amazing. But I'm going to have to go with Mark Estes' presentation here in terms, of, in terms of taste. This is what I really care about. I could eat this all day. Fantastic. And Michael, thoughts after the first two dishes? You know, this, it's just too close to call right now. There's some serious creativity. And again, staying in the lane of the classics, both excellent executions. Um, we're gonna have to see what comes next round. Fantastic. Well, Mark did forget your potatoes, Michael. Oh, there was that too. Yes, I'm, I'm missing the key ingredient on this plate, but let's just see what happens. Absolutely, sounds like we have a real competition heating up in the kitchen. Mark's gonna need to bring it on this next dish. I worry about it, honestly. <laughs> All right, Matt, you've got about 20 minutes left. How are things looking on your end? Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, I got my potatoes ready to go. I'm gonna prepare them, put them in the oven. And I got my steak. I'm actually gonna start searing. This will take the shortest amount of time. So I'm just trying to focus on my potatoes. I do have two ways I'm trying to do these potatoes. So we'll see how they turn out. Okay, so. your, your bold choices seem to impress the judges in the first round. You got any uh, surprises up your sleeve for round two? We'll have to see about that. Oh, okay, I like it, playing close to the chest. Good yep. luck, good luck. Chef Esty, yes. how's everything going on your end? You've oh, been turning you. and burning from the start, been, so what do you we, got for we've us? We've been cranking away in the Z-Line kitchen over here. Uh, we're having a lot of fun, that's for sure. Really impressed with the first dish that my challenger nailed out there. It was uh, quite awesome to watch and see. And right now, I'm just kind of getting my uh, last course ready, which will be uh, a couple takes on potatoes. Let's hope I don't forget them this time. <laughs> and uh, a, little, a little steak action, a little sexy cabbage on there, and some pickled mushrooms. I think we got. A, I think I have a pretty good plan. I'm liking, I'm, liking, I'm liking where we're at right now, and uh, I'm excited to see how this comes out. I got a couple of little surprises to show on the dish also. So. Excellent, because it sounds like you got a little more competition than you maybe had thought initially you coming know, in. You I, know, I would say, sometimes you might say that, but for me, I take everything really seriously. Uh, I wake up every day and I'm really lucky that I get to do what I love, and I never take it lightly. I never take it lightly, so uh, I am impressed by Matthew. I would not say I took him lightly, but I would say I'm very impressed. Excellent. Well, I think we're ready to see that passion see reflected in your final dish. Right on. Thank Thanks, you. Chef. Thank you. So Mark used some of the Z-Line wine in, uh, I saw him, was he making some type of sauce? The demi-glaze. The demi-glaze. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That ought to be really nice over that beef, especially if he uses a lot of those fresh herbs that we've got up there. I don't think for an excellent just, compliment. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like they both have a few more surprises left in store for you. Mark said he's working on a few different types of potatoes and Matt's got a few surprises he wasn't ready to share. Are you guys excited to see anything in particular? Are you looking for anything after the first round? Honestly, Drew, I'm blown away. I think that both these chefs have made some of the best food that I've ever had. So I'm really looking forward to what's next. Fantastic. Britt, how about you? I am really looking forward to the right 
cook on the steak. So if it's medium, medium rare, I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what I'm looking for right here. I think Mark might come out on top. And Michael. Yeah, I mean, Matt's creativity in round one was really, really impressive. And uh, I overheard that he's keeping it close to the vest. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming there. And also, you know, Chef SC, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve too. So let's just see what these potatoes look like. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they have something great in store for you guys. Thanks, judges. All right. How you doing, Matty? Doing all right, man. Feeling good? Feeling pretty good. Cool. A little over my head, but. Yeah, you did good the first one. You looking pretty good, buddy. Mark's got something going on over there over a double boiler. I saw some butter go in, but I'm not sure what else is happening. Oh yeah, you're right. Not some fancy techniques. It's interesting watching how quick Mark moves. He's got these little motions that are just precise and quick, right? It's like a seasoned vet. Did you see, he just pulled a pan out of the oven and I think that the beef went in there because you want to get a proper sear on the stovetop and then you want to finish in the, in the oven, oven, right? Yeah. So you get oh. even cooked. Oh no, oh. those are french fries. Oh, okay, well, hey, we didn't go with that potato salad angle. There's, there's french fries going down, oven fries. Hopefully you get those potatoes, Michael. I hope so. <laughs> I'm looking at Matt's steak there. I can just barely see it, looking for that nice, crisp, crusty sear. I hear it. Yeah, We've got I some searing going on. 12 minutes, chefs, 12 minutes. Mark's gotten kind of quiet over there. Yeah, Mark's nervous, honestly. I think he's nervous. I think that the potatoes, missing the potatoes, is getting to his head, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he really has stopped talking. He stopped talking. He stopped talking. He's feeling that pressure. So there's a lot of focus right now. Oh, here we go. This is it, classic steak technique in Matt, on Matt's side of the kitchen. A little butter just went down and the fresh herbs and now we're gonna see the basting. This is what's gonna happen right now. Nine minutes, chefs, nine minutes. Nine minutes, sir. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's go, Matty, baby. Let's do it. Stay so, Matt, tight, baby, stay tight. Let's it's go. been pretty quiet over here for the last 10 minutes. We're coming into the final stretch. How are you feeling about everything? Uh, I'm feeling all right. Yeah, I had to pivot on my, my uh, potatoes, so I'm uh, doing something more classic. Okay, last minute changes here and there? Yeah, I realized I was in over my head. I was picking something that was a little bit more difficult to make. I was gonna try to do a uh, take on like waffle fries. Okay. But uh, the t given the time limit, there's no way I could have gotten that done. So I'm just doing some regular traditional American duck fat fries. All right, chef, you've been pretty confident all day. You've been doing great so uh, far, but you, it got a little quiet over here for a I'll while. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm hustling. Uh, I, got a, I, got a, I got a lot of work to do. I really, really am impressed with Matt and his determination. Um, I want to show good for the judges. I want to show good for our restaurants. I want to show good for my family. And you know, this is no joke. You know, every time you come to cook, you know, as, as uh, Dennis Green would say, you play to win the game. Right? Excellent. And that's what we try to do here. Uh, that was maybe uh, Herm Edwards, one of the two. <laughs> we, they were who they thought we were, was Dennis Green. But we're here, this is fun. Uh, this is fun for me. I get to do this for a living. Uh, so, I mean, I'm sure when, I, when I first started cooking, everyone thought I was nuts. This is back in like 1991, and I kind of am nuts, so it works out well. But um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, having Z-Line here in our community and all the things they're doing is awesome. Matt's stepping up to have some fun today. And whether win or lose, I've had a good time. So uh, I want to put, put my good time in a plate right now. So I'm going to get back to work. Fantastic. Right. Thanks, Chef. I mean, Mark does have one thing going for him. Paul McCartney loved his food. Really? That's a fact. Wow. Truckee resident, Moody's restaurant, Truckee. Paul McCartney, regular diner. Wow, Seven minutes, Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. huge. I'm a huge Paul McCartney fan. There you go. All right, five minutes, chefs, five minutes. And these guys are focused, laser focused. Mark's already plating. Do you, you see this? Look how far ahead. Look at those, those scallops. No They look like way. scallops. Whoa. If it looks like a scallop, do you see the I cook think, on that beef? No, I think that might be a potato. Oh, it better be a potato. as a scallop. Here you go, Michael. It better be a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I would advise you to get some plates out. What's our time? There they I mean, are. are we running there out of time? Are. are we running out of time here? Three minutes, Chef. No. Three minutes. Mark Essie's getting a little more confident here. You can tell Maddie's a little more stressed out. We've got Matt starting to plate. Okay, fresh garlic and herbs going on those duck fat fries. Okay. Oh. Okay. So big Matt's old piece up. of meat, right there. Oh yeah. Looks like an awfully well done oh. piece of meat. Two minutes, chefs. Two minutes. 
Okay, I will say that I love sauce. Sauce, condiments, I have to have it on a meal. Look at that sauce Mark S. is putting on the steak. Oh, it's pretty. I don't know what that sauce is, though. drizzling it. That's Whatever it is. Looks like everybody. It looks delicious. Just That's got, what a drizzle looks like. Got points in my book. 90 seconds, chef. Really 90 seconds. That's a darker sauce, so. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, here we go. Okay, here it comes. Double sauce. Double oh, points. Oh, no, no, no. oh my gosh. Oh, this is the cabbage. The oh my gosh. Down. It's almost like Mark has been systematic. He's been driving the whole day. Mark driving knows the whole what day. I mean, Mark knows what he's doing. Yeah. One minute, chefs. One minute. He's finding yeah. his way again. Looks like a Bernays. Is that what? That is did that look Bernays? like a Bernays. That would make sense over Hollandaise. the double boiler. The Hollandaise. Oh, Hollandaise. 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 Oh, oh, now my Mark's God. cleaning now up talking. the plates. I think Mark might take the round two presentation. Mark's going to be done cleaning the entire kitchen by the time Matt finishes. <laughs> 30 seconds, chefs, 30 seconds. Don't don't let the judges get to you. Matt, what are you doing? You're, you're just what kind you mean, of Maddie? pacing. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna try to make a he's, sauce, but I don't have time. Stress walking, he's called stress walking. Try to go get some ketchup in the fridge. <laughs> 15 seconds, chefs. I'm um, done, I can't, I can't do it. 10, no, no time. nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, yep. three, two, one. We're done, folks. All right, judges. So uh, I just made a very classic ribeye, uh, just standard sear, and then finishing it off in the oven with some duck fat fries. Um, I was gonna make a sauce for the steak, but uh, just ended up cutting it too close to time and uh, couldn't finish it. Hopefully the steak is cooked to your liking and the duck fat fries are done and as well to your liking. Thank you. So we've got like a medium well yeah, it's definitely on the, on the well side. And we have like a al dente on the fries. It's seasoned really well. It's seasoned really well. Mm -hmm. And it's a good cut of steak. Looks like you put a little um, onion on that. You guys see a little onion on that sauce that you put on? No it's the fresh garlic, the fresh garlic for the duck fat fries. Oh, but just fat. it's it's marrying with the natural juices of the steak and making for a delicious bite. So the sauce is the natural juices. It's just the natural juices. Mm -hmm. That's his sauce. He's going just. That's how he should have presented his dish. Yeah. When the plate landed, I was reminded of that steakhouse experience where you have to order all the sauces on the side. Oh. And right. thinking like the beef should stand on its own. And it kind of does. Yeah. Kind of does. Well, I think you guys are right. Like if you would have presented it like, I don't think the meat needs sauce. He this was been. my plan. Yeah. You know, it's, it stands on its own. Then I feel like this would be amazing. Yeah. But now I'm wondering. Wishing, missing. Yeah, yeah. You're really missing yeah. the sauce. What kind of sauce did he not get to? Right? Because you ran out of time. But it's got, he did baste it with the fresh herbs and butter, and it's all there. I think he nailed the fries. No. They're a little undercooked. Well, and if someone's gonna call them fries, they better be crispy. Yeah. Uh, did he call them fries? He, he did. did. Uh, okay, Mr. Trey Gosh, here we go. Thank you, Chef. Uh, steak and taters. All right, steamed judges. Uh, we have a little take on steak and potatoes for you here. So right in front of you at six o'clock, you have a planked potato. That's uh, the ribeye, the inside of the ribeye. So I take the cap off and I braise the cap. So the cap's up at what I would call three o'clock for you, okay? And that's on top of another potato. So that's an Idaho potato. And then up top there's a red beet potato that's been rested. So when I rest the steak, I rest it on top of this. So all the juices kind of go into the steak. Top that first steak off with, the inside ribeye, is with a, a hollandaise. And then up top the braised cap is that red wine demi glace that I made, okay? So behind that you have some roasted onions, uh, about three different types of onions and some garlic. And then I made a gastrique, which is a mixture of vinegar and sugar with some cornichons and red cabbage. In the middle, you have an olive oil potato puree because potatoes are our, con our condiment. And then instead of taking the mushrooms and making a sauce, I shaved the mushrooms down um, with chives and radish. And I just wet, I just daintily wet, wet it with some sherry vinegar. That's gonna act as like a little bit of a cut through, like a foil, if you will, to kind of cut through some of the richness of the dish. And uh, you can enjoy steak and potatoes and uh, hopefully you like what I did. Thanks, Mark. Enjoy. Awesome. Your meals. Thank you. Did you get all the potatoes? I did, I did. Ah. Very exciting. The potatoes are there. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> this looks incredible. I mean, yeah. just the presentation is mind-blowing. It's a different He shows all the techniques of cooking. Like, 
the words I can't even remember. Right? <laughs> yeah. What blows me away is how did he do all of this in the same amount of time that Matt was only able to do potatoes in a tray and a steak? I don't know. Right? I mean, he did five different meals right here. Incredible. I think you hit on it earlier when we said that he had a plan from the get-go. And he started prepping this at the beginning and then brought it all together. You're right. There it is. Yeah. So, buddy, what'd you think? This was pretty fun. What do you, uh, what do you think you did wrong? What do I think I did wrong? Uh, well, I can <laughs> tell you, on the first one, I left uh, potatoes off the dish. Oh, I made four. It might have been sandbagged. But either way, um, I left the potatoes off one of those dishes. And then probably I'd say that last dish, it, I was, it was pretty good. It came together uh, really well. Yeah, a couple of different components. and got the, the thing. I tasted everything. Did you taste everything? I did. That's good. I that's should a, have watched That's the you main more. thing you gotta do is when, you when you're cooking, it's tasting, so that's a really good step. When I was plating my uh, fries, I took a bite into one and it was a little al dente. Uh, it wasn't yeah. quite there and I wish I, yeah. I should have put them in sooner. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, looking at you, you started right away uh, prepping for the final Yes, dish. that's that was... the idea. That's when I, mean, I was like, you had to jump in and get everything going and then go from there. Otherwise, you only have a half hour to cook. I made the mistake of waiting until I finished ah, the salad. yes, yes. And yes. then I got pressed for time, the f the got pressured. The famous mistake. You're, and then yeah. you heard a judge say she likes sauce, so you're ready to make some sauce. Yep, yep. You just kind of go off of there. But I'll tell you what, I was pretty impressed. The first course uh, was really good. It made me step up the game a little bit on the third, on the second course. I thought you did great on time. Uh, the kitchen, the kitchen was great. It's set up really well, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what the judges think. I mean, just sometimes because you do more doesn't mean it always wins. Right. So I had, a, I had a lot of things in the plate, but sometimes they might be. If it doesn't work, they might say it's a little too advantageous and, and give you a loss. So I never feel like it's over until it's over. All right, judges, you've tasted both dishes. You've got to see both chefs in action. What are your final thoughts? Well, honestly, Drew, I was blown away with what Matt Biondi did today. He just went above and beyond what I thought he was gonna be able to bring to the table. His uh, first course was delectable, it was good, maybe a little over salted, but the guy just nailed it. Honestly, his steak was great. I wish he would've gotten the sauce. If he would've presented everything as I was planning on having the meat speak for itself, I think he might've really scored better for me. I'm not sure how you guys feel. Um, instead, he said, I didn't get to the sauces. And then in the meantime, we watched Mark Esty make five different meals. We were wondering why he was moving and grooving while Maddie was going in slow motion this whole time. And it was because he was prepping these other meals this entire time. And it was, it kind of reminded me of the difference between, because Maddie's a great chef in, in his own right. Yeah. It reminded me of the difference of French Laundry, you know, the, one of the best restaurants in the world, and like kind of like a random place like Burger Me. So that to me was the difference. And Mark Esty really brought, he brought it today. Fantastic. Britt, what are your thoughts? So I'm also very impressed with Matt Biondi today. For someone who just cooks on the side or when they get home from a long day at work, I'm really impressed. I was, I think that he took the entree, the salad, but kind of flopped on the, uh, the main uh, dish. And then obviously Mark Essie, I mean, he just makes look like cooking on this Z-Line equipment look so flawless and just such at ease. So always impressing me, Mark Essie, but both of you guys did really good today. All right, some good feedback. And Michael, our final judge, your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, out of course one in the salad round, you know, I think Matt really stepped out of the gate with a strong foot forward with that carrot tartare. Super interesting, very innovative, and all the classic flavors that you expect. And you know, in round one, my salad niçoise was supposed to have that classic potato, and it was missing. Uh -oh. And so, you know, I'm not sure how that's gonna factor into the rest of it, because in round two, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit toss up here, because Matt really got a lot of flavor out of that piece of meat uh, with his nice butter and herbs, and I really enjoyed it, but, um, Mark had a very, very impressive entree, and uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a tough deliberation. We wanna thank you both chefs for competing today. It was fantastic effort and work. Thank you so much. Good job, buddy. <laughs> you too. Right. Judges, we're ready to hear your final decisions. Galen, we'll start with you. Well, I think Matt did a tremendous job. I'm really proud and impressed with the job that he's done. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go with Mark. <laughs> and Britt, your decision such drama. I would have to agree. Uh, Matt, you did a really great job, but Mark, your cooking is unbelievable. So Mark has to be the winner. This was, this was a really tough call. You know, um, Matt was an extremely innovative chef in the kitchen today, and uh, you showed some serious ambition uh, trying to execute the dishes that you put out there with or without the written down plan. Uh, and still managed to deliver some really solid flavors as well that were very, very impressive, even without a sauce. Um, Mark, you kept it classic and clean and managed to show 
a range of technique, which is something that I've come to know about you uh, over the years and something that's really impressive from the butchery to the execution of the hollandaise all the way down to the final plating. Um, and fortunately for you, it was enough to forgive the potato that was missing from course one. And I'm gonna also have to give it to you, Mark. Uh, congratulations. Well, it's a unanimous decision from our judges today. All right, chefs, we wanna thank you both for competing in the first Z-Line Chef Challenge. And congratulations, Chef Mark Esty, on being our first winner. Matthew, what were your thoughts on the day? Uh, I'm just grateful to be here. Um, it's an honor cooking against uh, the chef here. Uh, I learned a lot. I think a lot I learned more than I brought to the table. Uh, it was a fun experience. But uh, if, there, if I have an opportunity to do this again, I definitely know what I'm going to do differently. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. This is just a great time. And Chef, thank you so much. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank really you. fun. Really fun. Great challenge. Great. Chef, congratulations thank on being you. our thank first Z-Line Chef Challenge yeah. winner. What are your thoughts on the day? I mean, you know, I'll tell you, uh, when I was talking with Matt earlier, he said, you know, oh, it's going to be so easy for you. And I said, you know, it's never easy because you get out there, you might forget a potato, you might burn something, you might lose time, you might break a sauce, you might cut yourself. You never really know. So the way that I am, I take every little piece like really seriously and I try to have a good time always, but I always want to make sure I'm doing the right thing, working my technique, working the plan, you know, hopefully the plan has made sense. Yeah. We went through, I know Matt's first dish really blew me away. I was like, okay, there's some pretty good stuff going on there. And then uh, I knew that I really want to kind of step it up on the entree. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's a good tight kitchen, a good team. And uh, we really enjoy working on these appliances. I mean, that's what really you're here for to talk about. Uh, the Z-Line is not only great appliances, kitchen and bath, but they're also really forward thinking on the things that we show, you know, the things that I'm blessed and lucky to be called an ambassador for y'all. And I just really love uh, the relationship that we're forming. I love the, uh, the things that we get to do together. And whether I'm cooking or talking about cooking or talking about food or talking about the appliances, I'm really happy and lucky. So today was a great, great, great challenge. and It was a lot of fun. So I want to thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. I think your passion uh -huh. reflected today. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. We want to uh -huh. thank our competitors and our judges. This is the first Z-Line Chef Challenge, and stay tuned for the next one. Welcome, Galen. Thanks for that intro, Drew. I'm very looking forward to this. Um, <laughs> me. Can we do yeah, this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be shy. It's all right. <laughs> I'm just looking at Matt over here. He looks really confused by this egg that he's pasteurizing. <laughs> huh? You're very good. <laughs> One thing I know about Matthew is he's full of surprises. Where did we get this idea? Steak and potatoes. I kind of like it. Today, our judges are enjoying the beautiful Z Line wine bottled exclusively for Z Line by Castello de Amoroso. I think that we'd be doing a disservice to not shout out our sponsor, Z Line, <laughs> <laughs> for this lovely wine and putting on this event. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody knows some. Is it me or avocados getting smaller and smaller? Those are some small avocados. Every cut you take. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Z-Line. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Matt, I see a lot of smoke coming from your station. Maybe we turn that rain shit up a little bit, huh? Do we have that rain shit vented? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that's vented. That don't impress a meme. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think, Dre? What'd you think? You were in it, too. Yeah, because you are there, too, filming everything. It's pretty intense. It's well, it's actually a short one. We're not inside of a tent. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> See you guys later.